All right, Dwayne here, Phoenix Typewriter. dot com, Phoenix Typewriter Facebook, Phoenix Typewriter YouTube. Going to uh, show you the quick way to replace the front feed roller on a Corona Four. This is a Corona Four, or just a regular Corona, like a folding Corona, a three bank machine. I think has identical roller behind this guide right here, and even though this seemed all right, it's not all right. The back rollers are, are fine; they're round and still still feeding in, but that front roller it's not turning at all. I noticed um, it's just got a permanent flat spot, so it catches there pretty regular. I'm going to show you the quick way to do this. Okay, let's continue. I'm going to take this guide plate off right here in the front, and we're just going to get access to that front roller. A lot of times, you know, I take the platen roller out, you know, take the main roller out, take the pan out, and do it that way, but there's a way to do it without taking the platen roller out, but you can only do the front roller, and it's probably not the uh, approved method, but it can be done, so this piece comes off pretty easy, just like that. And now we're going to be able to see that front roller. So let's take a look at that. Let me turn some lights on here. Get the lights down here. We're going to take a look at that roller real close. And see what's happening here. So let's take a look. Here's our roller. But if you look, there's the flat spot right there. Big old flat spot. I'm going to try to release the roller tension here. And there, you can just see that flat spot. Pretty pronounced flat spot. It's not even turning when you roll a roller. That should be turning. But it's, not, it's so flat, it's not even engaging. So, the way to get this out of here is by bending this little tab just a little bit. You don't want to bend it too far because you'll get metal fatigue and it might break. But you can get this out of here this way. And we're going to do that real quick here. So, let's get a small screwdriver. We're just going to... We're just going to... Thin this a little bit the leverage of the platen roller. Maybe hold the pin here. That's gonna bend just a little bit. That's probably enough. And we can move the pan out like that, and that roller will come out and it'll slip out the other side. Like that. Now we got another hand. That's a pretty easy way to get to that roller, I hate to say that's super super slick okay let's take a look at the roller of course we have that flat spot one thing we need to do we're going to shove new uh, tubing onto this we need to make sure it's the right diameter so there's different ways to measure this you can just use something to slip over it maybe like a like a wrench like this see if it fits in the circle oh yeah look at that it fits perfect but I've got a you know gauge here that we can use so we're gonna gauge this up here and we're gonna spin it tight and I've already measured this once actually and don't measure the flat spot measure the good part so this is two and six tenths of an inch right there so what I did already was take another shaft out of another Corona Corona 4 and I've already removed the, uh, the rubber this rubber comes off pretty easily you can just crush it off of there Usually you can just crush it and it crumbles. See 
that just crumbles right off. Get down to the metal shaft. So I'll just crush it or peel it off or scrape it off. However you want to do it. And then take the uh when you get it all off of here, you go to the your wire wheel, your grinder with the wire wheel, and get it cleaned up really good, like this shaft. So that's, I'm not going to show that part of wire wheel in it, but it comes out clean like this. So let's get this debris out of here. Okay, so now we're going to pretend that this shaft is this shaft, so we got this shaft. Here we go. So I've got tubing, and i got two choices. Well, in fact, i got a whole bunch of choices. you got to have some tubing. And this is a lot of tubing. i got tubing for everything. Every size you could want. You just need to go get some automotive tubing. Or surgical tubing from the hobby shops. Or wherever you can find tubing. Some of this is, uh... Most of it's automotive, but, uh... A lot of sources to tubing. So I found two sizes. I like this surgical one. That's probably what we're going to use. Even though it's neon color, you cannot see it behind. You can't see it at all. So if you could see it, I'd, I'd probably be going with a black roller, like the back ones or something. But So let's stick these. Both have a diameter that's small enough that will fit on the shaft. So I'm going to put both these on. All I'm going to do here is show you the You've got to measure these after they get on and see what the diameter is. So let's go to this one because this one was pretty close. So that was 2.6. Let's open this up a little and close it. That's just right there. Maybe, maybe a little bigger. It's just a hair bigger. That's probably that. That's probably it right there. But I noticed the black one was quite a bit bigger. So you don't want to go too big or it might cause it might cause an issue, you know, with the typewriter. If that's too big a diameter it might rub the back of you know, your piece here, or it might rub the metal part of the paper pan. So you need to get it about right. Smaller is probably not the way to go. Close is good. So that's what that was originally. So let's, let's go with the rubber, with the uh, neon color tubing. And now you need to, you know, get a long section. Oops. And uh, so I cut a piece out. Now this can be really difficult to get it all the way down the shaft in one piece. It gets to be pretty tight, pretty quick. And there's two things you can do. You can warm this up a little bit, maybe in the oven or something for a while. Or you can put maybe a little soap on the shaft here. It will help it go on. But I have made a different technique. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take my air compressor nozzle and I'm going to stick this tubing on here around the opening. I'm going to shove that on a little bit. And a little bit more. Come on. That's even a bigger diameter but it's stretching. Okay, maybe that's enough. So now I'm going to do that, and I'm going to secure it with a hose clamp. So I'm going to squeeze this on here. And I'm going to tighten that down. It happens to be this quarter inch wrench I was just using. So let's tighten this up a little bit. Because... I'm going to put some pressure on that. Oops. I'm going to run my compressor for just a second or two here. 
then we're going to shove this on using air, compressed air. So, let's grab my nozzle. Should be enough, and I'm going to. This is pretty tricky. I've done this in a while. You need to support it against something, and I'm going to hit the air. I'm going to run this right on here. I don't think I have enough air compressed air to. I'm going to run this some more here. It's going, so I'm going to continue, even though it's noisy. And shove this on. Halfway now. Well, that worked pretty good. I really meant to uh, have that air compressor charged before I did this, but. Oh well, that's what happens when you're doing things on the fly. Oh, there it went right on there. Let's uh, disconnect this clamp. Take it off the shaft. Okay, so it's all the way on there. Just stretch it. Make sure it's all feeling even. And all we gotta do is cut the ends off here. So we'll grab a razor blade and, and we just trim this up right here. Just like that. This one also. Like that. Okay, that's it. And now we're going to put this back in. And again. 
again. Just a reverse procedure. So we just going to slide that one slot in that side. A little pin in there. And we're going to manipulate this one past this lip. I'm just going to force it down and in there. That's it. We're just going to bend this back just a little bit. Probably doesn't even need to be bent back. Just like that. Let's make sure it's not binding. Looks good. And there it goes. So now, I can't even pull the paper, but you know, when you hold the plat and pull the paper, and you, it's pretty tough. I, I have no trouble holding that paper in there. So, reassemble, and you're done. That's a pretty quick, uh, it's about the quickest feed roller repair you can do, I think. So that's one way to do the front feed roller on a Corona 4 or a folding Corona. It has the exact same, uh, same deal, so... Put the uh, guide back together here, and it's done. Pretty slick, and you can't see that roller anywhere. Maybe if you flip it around, even then you can't. You can't tell it's neon yellow. Um, you really can't tell. Uh, but now it's going to... It's going to work just fine. And it grips super fine. Alright, that's how you do a front feed roller with some neon surgical tubing. The uh, Phoenix typewriter way. Good day.